Are you a consultant who's working so hard to build a successful consulting business? Or maybe you're looking to get started in consulting and you want to make sure you do it the right way. Well, in today's video, I'm going to reveal four common mistakes that consulting businesses make and show you how to avoid them. And by steering clear of these pitfalls, you'll be so much more equipped to create a thriving consulting practice that offers immense value to your clients while providing you with the time and financial freedom you desire. If we haven't met yet, my name is Laura Meyer, and I'm a growth strategist to some of the country's fastest growing brands and a mentor to consultants. Over the years, I've helped hundreds of consultants get started in consulting, and I love it as a business model. But there's some really common mistakes that I see people make again and again that I want to help you avoid, whether you're just getting started or you're trying to figure it out and you're in the middle of building your consulting practice. The first mistake is relying on one-time sessions or VIP days or retreats or strategy days to sustain your consulting business. This can feel like an attractive option for consultants because they're easy to sell, they're one-time fees. However, there's a lot of drawbacks to this approach that can really limit your growth in your consulting business. Instead, consultants should really offer ongoing retainers for the following reasons. First, building stronger client relationships is so crucial to the long-term success of your company. One-time sessions don't provide you with the opportunity to develop deep, lasting connections with your clients. So by working closely with them over time with a long-term project or retainer, consultants can better understand the needs of your clients and provide tailored solutions that lead to better outcomes. Second, consistent revenue is so much better for your business. It's essential for planning and scaling your consultancy. So relying on one-time sessions can result in really inconsistent cash flow. So offering retainers are a much better way to create that steady stream of income, provide financial stability, and allow consultants like you to focus on high quality services while you're not in business development all the time. And then also this continual improvement of the business is key to providing the best possible value. So on a one-time session, you can give them your advice and ideas, but it's really limited to that one chunk of time and you may not be able to address all of their pain points. With an ongoing retainer, you can support them in implementation, you can continuously monitor their progress, and you can adjust strategies and recommendations to make sure that they get the results that they came for. The second mistake that I often see is failing to time block. Time blocking is essential for consultants who want to manage their workload effectively and then also have a healthy the work-life balance, which we all want to have. So by dedicating specific hours to your client-facing work, consultants can focus on tasks without distractions, which leads to increased productivity and efficiency and really just healthy boundaries. So time blocking ensures that you can allocate time for both your professional life and development as well as your personal life. It reduces stress and it just increases your overall satisfaction with being an entrepreneur. And by planning your work, you can meet deadlines, you can deliver a higher quality experience and just develop that long-term sustainable business. This gets a lot into family life balance and setting boundaries, which I'm a big fan of. And this allows you to dedicate specific work hours where your clients know when they can expect you. And it really forces you to improve your time management. This also allows you to time block around personal commitments. For example, I work four days a week from 12 to four and I take Fridays entirely off. So I know that I'm always available on Fridays for personal activities, personal appointments. And this flexibility is one of the best reasons to be an entrepreneur and specifically specifically to be a consultant. So by keeping track of your time and making sure that you are working within specific time blocks, you can ensure that you can grow your business in a way that works for you, where you're not going to start getting frustrated or resentful or even burnt out. This is so important to creating a thriving, sustainable business. And it allows you to be more productive, achieve that work-life balance that we all really crave and allows you to set just not even clear boundaries, but expectations with your clients of when they can expect to connect with you, when they can expect to meet with you. And it allows you to be able to make time for your personal lives without feeling apologetic about it. The third mistake is taking on the wrong clients. Starting with right fit clients is crucial for a successful consulting business. And this never gets easier easier by carefully selecting clients you love working with, as tempting as it is to take on a high routine or a project when it's the wrong fit. It really is one of the most common mistakes I see consultants make. And it is something that we even had to do most recently in our own consultancy. I ended up interviewing clients 
thinking that it was going to be a great fit. It was referred by a head of a board of one of our other biggest client that brings in multi six figures a year into our consultancy. And after a couple meetings and, you know, digging for more information from me, I realized this is a client that we're going to be three or six months in and they're not going to get a result and they're going to be blaming me. And I could just see the writing on the wall. And it's really hard to walk. Writing that email was challenging. I didn't want to let people down. And I had already pretty much counted on getting that retainer because they had already verbally committed to working with me. And so I had to take it off my cash flow projections. I mean, it was painful, but I knew that the relationship that I had with the head of the board who referred me was so much more important than getting that retainer. So the bottom line is be selective about the projects or retainers that you take on. Don't be afraid to turn down opportunities that don't align with your expertise or your frameworks. It's so much better to focus your energy on clients that are the perfect fit. And remember, that growing your business on happy clients allows them to refer you to other people and just creates this reputation where you're always getting results for your client. It allows you to showcase your expertise with case studies and just create that thriving consulting business. So making sure that you're choosing the right clients and always being in a position where you can say no is an amazing investment in the future of your business. And it'll pay off for years in terms of client satisfaction, results, and the overall growth of your consulting practice. Mistake number four is succumbing to imposter syndrome. I see this all the time. Imposter syndrome is another common mistake that consultants often face, causing them to doubt their abilities and their expertise. This self-doubt can become a significant roadblock in growing a success successful consulting business, and it's something that I see really often specifically with female consultants. They don't feel like they know enough, or they've done enough, or they don't have enough knowledge, or they don't have enough skills, or they don't have the right certification. And the truth is, is that you probably are very much undercrediting yourself for the amount of knowledge and expertise that you have. So instead of letting imposter syndrome hold you back, you should really recognize your value and embrace your unique strengths and the experiences that you've had that have brought you to this point. So one way to overcome imposter syndrome is really to acknowledge your accomplishments. Like even take a minute and write them down and remind yourself of the value that you bring to the table. You can make a list of your professional achievements, the skills you've developed, even mistakes that you've made and how you've learned from them, the positive feedback that you've received from clients or colleagues. And by focusing on your successes, even if you had to learn them the hard way, can build your confidence in your abilities and just start to silence that self-doubt that often accompanies imposter syndrome. Remember that your clients care most about the results that you can deliver. And if you can consistently provide value and help them reach their goals, they'll be much more satisfied with your services than if you check all these boxes that might be in your head. So it's essential to surround yourself when you're getting into consulting with a network of supportive peers or mentors or coaches that can offer guidance, encouragement, and validation. Engaging with other people in your industry can help you provide perspective, learn from their experiences, and even the most successful consultants, it's important for you to know, can face these challenges and doubts along the way. But by staying continually learning, watching videos like this, staying connected, acknowledging your value, you can overcome imposter syndrome and build the thriving consulting business that you deserve. So by avoiding these four common mistakes, you can really set yourself up for success in your consulting business. Remember to focus on recurring income instead of one-time income. Time block your hours so that you have healthy boundaries with your business. Work only with the right clients and work to overcome that self-doubt. And if you love this video, make sure that you keep watching more videos that help you grow a business that you absolutely love. I'm such a big fan of consulting. And if you also want to learn more about how to turn your expertise into a thriving consulting business, make sure to check out this link. It's an ebook where I put in every Everything that I know about how to get started in consulting. It's entirely free and it's packed with value. So make sure to check it out. It's also in the notes below and let me know how did you like this video? I'd love to hear from you. I'll see you in the next video and thanks so much for joining me.